beginning of lockdown, I was starting a new job and, you know, I was just dealing with the fact that I wasn't going to be able to see my friends and family easily. So I actually wasn't very inspired to, to draw and create. I think I went into a bit of a hibernation and just, you know, conserve my energy. My name is Burundi Kawoya and I'm a mixed media collage artist. I use card and African print fabric, specifically Ugandan Betty, in my collages. Around summertime, I realised that I missed creating and I wanted to bring something new to life and maybe it's about what I missed. So. Um, I definitely had ideas, started creating more dance-themed artwork. As the Black Lives Matter movement gained a global um, hold and you know, much needed attention, again, that really impacted me and made me sit still and think, what is it that I can say? Um, to black women and about black women through my artwork. Black women, particularly queer black women, particularly disabled queer black women are really often at the forefront of um, this movement to gain equity and fight systemic supremacy, white supremacy. So I really took on a lot of those messages and kind of reflecting back on where I was at the beginning of lockdown, I realized it's really important to listen to your body and fighting is really important and raising awareness is, is important, but also taking care of yourself and resting and conserving your energy so that you can have the space to create. I was then able to actually create something new and exciting that spoke to me and inspired by Alicia Garza, one of the Black Lives Matter founders. I created a piece of art that something I really wanted to see and I call it Sisters Need Sleep. It's three women holding each other Two of them, you know, looking out, kind of protective of the third, who is has her eyes closed and she's quite peaceful and serene. It reminds me, and I really hope that black women see that they are allowed to take care of themselves and to take time out. If we cannot allow ourselves to rest, we won't have the mental capacity to dream and imagine a better society for all of us. And that's my, you know, this piece of art is, is my way of contributing to that conversation to remind people that it's okay to take time out because that's how we're going to get to a place where we can create something. And I firmly believe that we can all create and we can all be artists in that way. And that's what's important to me. It's really important. It's really different from my dance themed art or my portraits where the women are, you know, just there to be admired. And I love that message. And I, I, I like that people get a lot from the dance work because, you know, it's that memory of being free and liberated and having a good time. But the act of rest and the, the process of imagining and creating, I think is something everyone can do. And I hope my art can help people to do that. name is Craig Keenan. I've been living in London for well over 10 years now. I primarily focus on printmaking and specifically speaking cyanotype printmaking. 
I live uh, with my girlfriend who's also on lockdown with me and we've got like a little one bed flat uh, in Bethnal Green in London. It's a, a mad mixture of uh, feelings and emotions, right? I think it's totally unprecedented. There's no, there's nothing like this has ever happened in our lifetime. Like hopefully never will. I feel it's a bit of a roller coaster. Some days I'm like, ah, do you know what? It's, this is all right. I, I'm a little bit of an introvert anyway. I actually spend quite a lot of my time here just being creative or like I mean the biggest thing is like not going up to the studio so much that that's basically closed down as well you know it's it's a little bit strange I flip from being like I'm all right this is okay like we're all right in in our little localized situation but then then you have all these other mad scary thoughts that start to seep in largely you know how am I going to make money sadly it's like a big factor of it and then you get those bigger more existential frights getting into your mind as well where you start thinking like shit are we ever going to be released and you know are we actually in an episode of black mirror is it all a bit like mad and sketchy the main reason and only real driving force behind doing what i do is just because i want to and because it helps like soothe my soul and relax me and it helps me meditate and it's fun so it releases endorphins in, in that ways and in those sorts of ways, if you know what I mean. So I think this is definitely good distraction from uh, what's going on. After sort of having had coronavirus and just and being like really, really sick for quite a long time and getting a little better, I realized that I, I was going to need to to be creative and get on it in that sense. So the first thing I did when I uh, was able to break free of quarantine was yeah get up to the studio and get hold of as much little random bits and bobs of equipment that I can use just to keep my mind and soul occupied for the next however many months. You know, I've started taking pictures of like all the plants that I've got in my house and like various little props and things that I've got. So I'm just using what's around me to yeah, just sort of carry on as normal a little bit, I guess. This is sort of what I would be doing anyway. <laughs> just sort of sitting about and trying to drum up ideas, like little creative projects and stuff to work on. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely helpful in this sort of a time. You know, have, having not been well at, at the beginning of this, I was surrounded by uh, lots of tissues and, you know, grossness, just being in the midst of uh, sickness. Um, it sort of flashed into my mind that that was a pretty scary little thing as well, like the idea of that tissue uh, carrying the virus and actually what real fear that's that's caused now. And that was... It really, I sort of thought, yeah, that, that, that's a nice little idea, I'm going to do it. Sort of woke up with this uh, in my mind. And then I manipulated a tissue, take a bit more of a, a ghostly kind of a form and photographed it very simply just on a, on a black background, just out in the garden. And popped into Photoshop, stuck a couple of little eyes on him and, and that was it, he was basically done. And then it was just a case of seeing whether people would be interested in having something like that on their walls. Half of me thought people would really go for it because it's kind of funny and it's not too serious, but it, it definitely is like a bit of a nod to what's going on now very specifically. But then I thought, how many people are actually going to want a reminder of this mental like stage in our, in our history on the wall? And it turns out quite a lot, <laughs> quite a few people did um, have that same sort of sensibility about it all, which I thought, yeah, it's kind of cool. I really, I, I hope there'll be that positive little shift again and everyone will just be so excited to be able to engage with culture again because that, that, you know, that's... Being in this now has made me realise that is I am in the business of culture and at the moment, like, that's been totally shifted and warped into just this 2D online. That's all we've got is that engagement. So I think as soon as you're able to break out of that, hopefully people get real excited and, like, really engage with it and double down and, you know, art fairs will pick back up again and it'll all be super super vibrant and exciting again. My name is Julia Pomeroy. I'm a student in my third year at Leeds Arts University. And just this summer, my course was coming to an end. So I was preparing for my degree show and working really hard to do well overall. So a lot of that has been like photos of relatable environments that I found in Leeds but also in my like friends homes and even back home 
I do a lot of domestic scenes of people on sofas or just relaxing, a lot of introverted sort of pieces. I've tried to refine that that like theme of comfort through in a public space as well. Specifically at the moment, I'm trying to find a nice balance between the figure and the environment. I wanted to get a good grade and really prove to myself that this is a subject through oil painting that can still be appreciated in contemporary art today. I was really optimistic. I'd had a lot of it planned months in advance. It's what the degree expects you to prepare for. When lockdown was announced, I didn't really believe it at first, quite honestly. It all just suddenly stopped and halted. It just didn't sink in until much later. The whole concept of everyone just having to cut themselves off from everyone and what normality was just completely changed. I was quite heartbroken that all the facilities were just not an option anymore. I was very worried about how the course was going to adapt to the limitations of staying inside. I'm generally quite optimistic. I'm quite lucky in my situation. We've been asked to process and respond more this quarantine environment. I began this new project in response to lockdown and especially the unfortunate distancing from friends and family. I started to create these light washes of oil paint representing us still like engaging with technology but using that to reach out to those people again and trying to recreate the normality of us having social connections again. Being in line with my subject matters of the everyday and domestic interiors and trying to involve objects that are really familiar to most people. I began to create work of literally just my phone in a Zoom call conversation with my friend and or on my laptop and in recognizing the technological boundary, but also like just in the limitations of the screen, like how important it is for us to always be connected to other people. It was set in the interior of just my house because obviously that's where I was, that was my reality at the time. And then it was contrasted against these smaller interiors of where my friends and family were. And yeah, it was just recognizing that distance, but trying to make it closer as well, just through my oil paintings. I was lucky to really focus on my current direction of my practice, but it was nice as well to obviously respond to lockdown and how it impacted my theme and topics and for me to then respond to that through oil painting still. My name is Roberto Grosso. I'm an Italian artist who is based in London. And I'm a multidisciplinary artist who combines art, music and augmented reality. During lockdown, I came up with the idea of helping the NHS. And my way to combine my talents of art, music, and augmented reality really merged with this uh, vision that I had for Heroes. So I created a print inspired by the David Bowie song called Heroes. 
This incredible song has a line in it, in the lyrics, that says, we can be heroes just for one day. And this line struck a chord in me because I really wanted to appreciate the effort that the NHS goes through every day, especially during this COVID crisis. So this is my tribute to these everyday heroes. So from the artistic side, I needed to take this vision for heroes and make it mine. So by using this, uh, uh, the incredible David Bowie cover from Heroes, where he has this incredible pose, I asked a friend of mine who is a nurse in a London uh, hospital to replicate the same pose. He took this picture, it was amazing. Luckily enough, it kind of looks, I don't want to say it looks like Bowie, because nobody looks like Bowie, but he has a similar, uh, the bone structure of the body is kind of slim, it's not too, too big. It worked perfectly, and he, he did it with the gloves and the mask. So I managed to bring that cover that was already iconic as the song, kind of like in a conceptual way, I managed to bring it to nowadays, let's say, topic, which is the coronavirus. So this particular print anyone can buy is my tribute to these everyday heroes and all the profits will go towards the NHS. As artists, as human beings, especially during this lockdown, we discovered this amazing capacity and skill to make the best out of the worst situations.